In my ever-going quest to build myself up from the Stone Age and into my own Industrial Revolution, there's one machine that is potentially the most crucial. The so-called mother of machine tools, the lathe. As I begin moving into the industrial age, harnessing power from nature and using it for my own industrial needs is going to involve a lot of spinning objects, from water wheels, windmills, steam engines, and the tools that will be powered by them. For them, you're going to need a variety of circular symmetric pieces, from pulleys, gears, screws, axles, wheels, bearings, and countless other pieces. Any imperfections in their symmetry, and it's going to throw things off possibly create a wobble, and potentially destroy the machine, or at least make it less effective. Here enters the importance of the lathe. Overall, the concept is pretty simple, and has very ancient origins to at least as long as the 13th or 14th century BC. Basically, a working piece of material is pinned to a single axis, and is then spun by some device. Modern lathes use a motor to spin, but earlier ones used an attached cord that spins a piece of wood. Early versions were often powered with a bow, and I actually made a version of this early on in my Abacus episode. However, while technically effective, it was incredibly difficult to use, and very limited in what could actually be made on it. A later version of the lathe was the spring pole, which stored energy on each pole, allowing much longer rotations with less effort. During my trip out to Utah a few weeks ago, I decided to get some help in building this machine. So here with Joseph from Good and Basic, and Nate from the internet, and uh, today we built a pole lathe. You're sawing through a piece of wood with a homemade saw. That is awesome. Look how smooth that is. You made that. Yeah. That's hardcore. That's honestly a pretty good finish. I like that. That's not bad at all. Neat. Huh. Is that a breaking sound? Yep. First, thank you to Helix Sleep for sponsoring today's video. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that's customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your door. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up yourself. They have a simple quiz that you can fill out and get matched with the best mattress for your sleep pattern. I'm personally more of a stomach sleeper, so they paired me with a Helix Dusk mattress. I've had the mattress for several months now, and I have to say, it is definitely really nice. Uh, I just got back from doing a bunch of traveling with VidCon and some other things. It was a very big difference from all the different hotels and variety of beds I slept in to finally get home to the Helix mattress, get a much better night's sleep. Definitely recommend it. Really good mattress. You should try it. The best part about all this is the Helix delivers your mattress right to your door for free within the US. With your Helix Sleep mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 10 year warranty and there are financing options and flexible payment plans. I had this mattress unpacked and ready to go in under 15 minutes. And I've slept pretty amazingly every night since. The amazing sleep that you'll get with this mattress works with the zoned lumbar support cells, which are designed to better cradle your body as you sleep. These coils are softer under your shoulders while firmer under your hips to better align to your natural body shape. This gives you a consistent pressure relief on your joints and muscles throughout the night, guaranteeing the best sleep possible. 
All the mattresses are made in the USA and are certified to be both safe to you and the environment, certified by the CertaPure US program. Click on the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash HTME for up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress plus two free pillows. I need some tools to actually use on the lathe. So back home in Minnesota, I tasked Adri with the task of forging some lathe chisels to use on the new pole lathe. We're going to forge some lathe tools for our pole lathe. We're going to make three chisels. This thinner stock here is going to end up being our skew chisel and our parting tool. And this thicker stock here is going to end up being our roughing gouge. Forge is hot behind me. We should probably get this heating up and get at it. skew and our bevel formed in. So next up we're going to come back here and we're actually going to shoulder this out and start drying out the tang where it'll attach to the handle. some wider stock here. We're going to forge our roughing gouge. We're going to take this and we're going to shoulder it down and we're going to taper this out to form our tang before we come over and cut off the other side, chamfer it and roll it around to uh, form that half round shape. Let's get it hot and we should have some lathe tools. Back in Utah, we're ready to test out the lathe and just need to find a good springy branch to connect it to. Okay, that should work. <laughs> but what about this one? What block? This one. The one that we were trying to spin? Yeah. That one? <laughs> I think maybe we should wrap it around that one. <sighs> nah. No, I think we'll work without it. Decent chance we'll still wear our way through this string after a few turns. We just need a perfect concept. I feel pretty happy about that. <laughs> we waved. <laughs> Adjust where the string is by moving the stick. That way, when you need to part this section, you can move it over here and not cut your rope. Big strokes up and down. Yeah, hit yourself in the head with that branch. That's key. <laughs> That's how you know you're doing it right. This you're is not also why apprentices. I was saying, I, if I were doing this, I would get you used to the timing. Apprentice. I would have a guy who's your job is to step on things. <laughs> This 
bigger piece of wood into a, an aesthetically pleasing smaller piece of wood. You gotta, I, I know you I look get, a little dumb, but the coordination is harder than it going. looks. Yeah. No, it <laughs> takes getting all your parts moving at once. I mean, part of it is the awkward angle of the pedal, right? Yes, but definitely. It's only this shaky because I'm doing it left-handed. I promise I can do it better right-handed. No, don't ask me to try. The basic idea is we have two sharp points that stab into the end of a piece of wood so that it can rotate on those two points. And then we have this string here, which is attached to a, a long springy pole. And then we press down here and that pulls on the string. And suddenly we have a super primitive lathe that we can use to carve cylindrical stuff. Anything like chair legs or tool handles or furniture pieces or pulleys or all kinds of other useful things can be made on this. You press down with your foot and you have to work in this really funny rhythm where you're pressing the tool in only on the downstroke, you're balancing on one foot. It's very much like pat your head, rub your tummy at the same time, except like in multiple dimensions while making stuff. And it ends up being really, really fun. Do you agree? It's pretty satisfying. Like I've used powered lathes and obviously you're gonna get a lot more done with them, but there's something really like back to the roots of the, of the creative process with this. I can't wipe this grin off. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> We've carved out a little handle blank here. We're gonna use a skew chisel and we're gonna try to separate that out. There we go, my angle was wrong. Well, good timing. I think we're done for today. <laughs> it's a heck of a proof of concept. Isn't that awesome? It sure is. Stick that on a chisel somewhere. We made a thing. We made a thing that made a thing. Yeah, we made a thing maker. I find something very, very, very pleasing about things that make other things. Ended up leaving the support structure with Joseph so he could build his own version, and I brought the poppets back with me. So now I just need to rebuild that same support structure back home. I'll be ready to start turning any future projects and start industrializing.
going to take a bit of practice to get the full hang of it, but I'm already able to produce some pretty nice shapes that have perfect circular symmetry. So this lathe is pretty much limited to only being able to turn wood, but it'll serve as a base as I eventually upgrade it to be powered by external sources like a water wheel, which should hopefully open things up to turning harder metals as well. Something that will prove absolutely crucial as we progress further into the industrial age. Thank you again to Joseph from Good and Basic and Nate from the internet for their help with putting this all together. Be sure to check out their channels. Nate posted his side of the collaboration we did on trying to make cast iron, so be sure to check out that if you haven't. And if you want to see more examples of wood turning with a primitive pole lathe, Good and Basic has a great video showcasing that. Thank you again to all of our supporters on Patreon. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.